good morning. I think that this uh, fourth uh, meeting will be the last uh, dealing with the very uh, general questions uh, concerning history of philosophy. Uh, starting uh, from the next week, we will have a very uh, precise uh, area of, uh, of fields of academic interest like politics, media, religion, etc., uh, which uh, probably will be more um, concrete, more perhaps even interesting. But nevertheless, uh, I think that as a good way to enter into uh, philosophical um, reflection is good uh, to have uh, some uh, general panorama of the possible questions or possible uh, path to, to research at or, or to reflect uh, upon philosophy. Uh, today, I would like to invite you to think about uh, what we gain in dealing with uh, philosophical thinking. So we left uh, behind us uh, our discussion on uh, different uh, methods of philosophizing, uh, different way to uh, approach uh, philosophy as uh, such, and now, very concrete, uh, I would say even not so much philosophical question, what, what we gain uh, dealing with uh, philosophy, uh, reading philosophical books, uh, etc., etc. Uh, again, uh, you already probably realize that I am not a speculative mind. I don't like to be very abstract in my um, approach to philosophical problems, more I prefer to have a very uh, concrete examples, names or titles. So uh, also in, in, uh, in this case, I am proposing you to read uh, uh, all entire book if you have time in this pandemic time where uh, our activities are so limited and perhaps uh, we can turn this necessity to stay more at home into uh, a virtue to, to, to read more. So for those of you who have this custom to read, uh, I will put on, on uh, our platform uh, two books. Uh, and the first one uh, is uh, written by a very interesting um, philosopher, a sociologist. Um, her name is Arlie uh, Russell Hochschild, or Child, Hochschild. And uh, why uh, I propose to, to read uh, uh, her book uh, in order to find a good answer for a not easy question why uh, what we gain in dealing with philosophical questions or philosophical uh, thinking uh, because I think that uh, Arli uh, Russell Hoch's uh, child um, in her many books uh, find uh, or give an answer to this basic question, why is it good to, to use your abstract philosophical thinking in understanding the surrounding your reality? She was born in 1940, so is already emerita, uh, professor emerita of sociology, uh, but nevertheless, uh, she keep writing, she's very active, uh, uh, in uh, academic uh, discussions. And the book uh, which uh, I would like to propose you as a possible uh, impulse to reflect uh, on our question was published in uh, 2016, so four years ago, but it took uh, her five years of very complex uh, research and the result was a uh, quite thick book and you will find it uh, on the platform but perhaps uh, 
uh, before uh, you even uh, consider uh, the idea to read it, uh, please uh, just have a look on on few pages of of, of the preface uh, to to this book. This introductory remarks are extremely illuminating, and uh, already in these few pages, uh, perhaps you will find uh, an answer. Why is uh, what we gain uh, dealing with philosophy or entering in philosophical questions? Uh, but the title is very, very important, of course, um, namely Strangers in Their Own Land. Strangers in Their Own Land Anger and Mourning on the American Right. Um, why uh, this book, which, uh, by the way, is also translated um, into Polish uh, and in many other languages, uh, became a bestseller? Uh, first of all, uh, because uh, Arli, uh, Russell Hoch's uh, child, was the, the one of the few scholars was not surprised why uh, Donald Trump won. Uh, presidential elections uh, were um, in, in the very high point when she already finished her book. So uh, by no means um, this result influenced her way of thinking. But nevertheless, uh, looking at the, the, the victory of, of uh, uh, Republicans, and particularly of this candidate, um, uh, Rona, uh, Donald Trump, uh, she, she mentioned this fact in, in the preface. But nevertheless, what is important that uh, she was not surprised because all entire book, this sociological um, analysis, dealt with um, uh, voters uh, or enthusiasts uh, even of the uh, Republican Party, or saying more precisely, they uh, were um, uh, enthusiasts of Tea Party, so the, 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 the very radical uh, core of the Republicans. But it was, uh, and it is not uh, a sociological analysis like, let us say, Pew Research uh, Center, where, we, where you have so many uh, different uh, data analysis, you comparison, etc., etc. This is an, an unusual book. You can read it almost as a, as a fiction a book because it's based on, on uh, characters, on uh, deep um, interviews, many uh, conversation, observations uh, of life of people who have a different opinions than I have. And I think this is something which uh, you can have only if you have a, a philosophical attitude toward life that you are not uh, surprised that uh, the reality is so rich, so complex, so different uh, from your own world of view. Um, what is uh, also important that um, uh, Arli Russell Hoch's ch child uh, spent uh, her entire academic life at the university in campus. And uh, her previous books, uh, although dealing with different aspects uh, of American life, were written from, from this, so to say, university perspective, academic perspective. But uh, in, in this book, uh, she, and you will find it in this few pages of, of preface, of introduction, she decided to move from Berkeley, from California, where is, as you know, a, a center for um, uh, liberal thinking of the 
Democrats. Uh, the majority are voting for Democrats, for Barack Obama, etc. So it's, it's in a way uh, she felt at home with this liberal thinking. But she was curious. She was full of empathy for those who vote uh, differently, who have uh, uh, sometimes, according to her own understanding of, of policy, uh, they were voting against their own interest. For example, they were for, I don't know, uh, supporting uh, this 1% of, of the most rich people. Uh, they vote for cutting funds, uh, federal funds for uh, regions, poor regions like Louisiana, exactly, in, in, in this case. Uh, so how come that uh, people are voting against their own interest? Uh, even worse, they, they knew that they vote against their own interest. And what she discovered in, in her long process of learning, of listening, with empathy, with willing to understand, that those people felt like um, uh, not accepted by the majority of the American, or by high culture or university culture of the of the uh, of the United States, so they were um, felt like uh, humiliated uh, by uh, well-educated uh, people, by 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 republic, uh, by uh, Democrats, by uh, Clintons. Um, Bob, uh, Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton, for them, they were enemy. Uh, also, Barack Obama was not uh, the favorite choice, etc. So she was like wondering why my own sympathy are not uh, the same of these poor people for whom she felt really, uh, well, deep uh, sympathy and after spending five years with them even even gratitude for willingness to share their own opinion with her so it's really a, a very interesting from um, i would say philosophical point of view to read this kind of um, sociological approach but with philosophical background that you are approaching people different from you, not to con condemn them or to ridiculize them, but to find a, a way to communicate with them, to understand their lives, etc., etc. At, at the end, the most uh, important, decisive, um, characteristic of her methods is the gratitude for the willingness to share their life and empathy. I understand them, so I don't share their ideas, but perhaps if I will be on their place, uh, I will, I will uh, um, make similar uh, decisions, etc. And I think this is what helps um, author Ari, um, Arlie Russell Hochschild to build bridges between her and the people to whom um, she addressed her uh, research. And this is completely different from uh, the majority of uh, emotions which we can observe in media, which we can conserve observe in politics, namely contempt and dislike, contempt and dislike. If you contempt someone, if you dislike someone, you are unable to, to restore a communication with, with the person. So uh, my first um, point in our reflection on what we gain uh, 
in dealing with philosophical thinking is that we create more bridges and we are destroying walls. And uh, early, uh, early Russell Hochschild are helping us in this. Uh, my next hero will be a different philosopher, you will see in the moment.